I have helped hundreds of people successfully lower their cholesterol. And from this, I have seen a pattern of recurring common mistakes that many people make. So in this video, I will reveal what those mistakes are so you can avoid them, get to your cholesterol lowering goals sooner and improve your health. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. So the first mistake is not knowing and understanding the breakdown of your cholesterol results. Many of us are told that we have high cholesterol and we leave it at that, but you should know your numbers. You should know what your good cholesterol levels are and what your bad cholesterol levels are. Because there are different dietary strategies that you can implement to target each, rather than just following your generic cholesterol lowering advice. So much so I've made a full video on this, which you can watch here. Honestly, it's really important and it can really help you to target the changes that are best suited to you. It's also just good practice to keep a copy of any of your blood results that you get from your doctor. I have a Google Drive with all of my medical tests from the last few years, and this is just good to have in case you ever move doctor or move country. And with some medical results, it's useful to look at trends. So being able to see what your cholesterol levels are now, but what they were last year or maybe even five years ago could be helpful. We need to be advocates for our own health. So keeping a close eye on all of your results and keeping them organized is a really good habit to get into. The second mistake is not thinking about your cholesterol sooner or thinking that this doesn't apply to you. We tend to think that cholesterol and heart disease isn't something that we need to worry about until we're in our 40s, but this is not the case. We know that one in five heart attacks occur in those that are aged 40 or less. Scary, but simply put, it's what most of us will die from. Heart disease kills almost twice as many people worldwide as cancer. So we need to start thinking about it when we're younger because cholesterol has a compounding effect. So even if it's only marginally high at age 20, but it stays marginally high over the next few years, it will continuously plug away at your blood vessels, causing slow but growing damage. Think of it like investing in the stock market. You might just be investing $10 a month and think that's not much. But in 10 years time, that could have compounded to $10,000. And cholesterol is similar but with a negative impact. I'm going to pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos. And while you're at it, I would love it if you gave the video a thumbs up too. The next mistake is expecting your diet alone to cure high cholesterol. A healthy diet is essential, but it may not be enough, especially if you're genetically predisposed to high cholesterol. You do also need to be making lifestyle changes and you need to be making an effort to exercise. The recommendations are to get 150 minutes of exercise that makes your heart beat faster every single week and two to three sessions of exercise that make you stronger. For example, that could be a 30 minute walk five days a week with two Pilates sessions. But it's finding what you like, starting at your baseline and slowly building up to what you can tolerate. But the combination of cardio and strength exercise has been shown to be better at preventing heart disease than cardio exercise alone. You also need to be trying to manage your stress levels, which I know is sometimes easier said than done. And you need to be prioritizing sleep. Generally, seven to nine hours of sleep a night is best. Nine to 10 hours is good, but getting more than 10 is considered worse than getting six or seven, as per the grading system used to check your heart disease risk. So if you do find that you need more than 10 hours of sleep a night, you'll need to really look at the quality of the sleep that you're getting. But all of these lifestyle factors work together. For example, if you start exercising, you'll likely be able to sleep better. And if you sleep better, it'll be easier to make healthy dietary choices the next day. The next mistake is going to be an unpopular one, but it's that some people will still need cholesterol lowering medication, despite their best efforts with diet and lifestyle changes. How our bodies metabolize cholesterol can be largely genetic. And diet and exercise can go a long way in improving your cholesterol levels. And in many cases, they can alleviate the problem but this unfortunately is not the case for everyone. Some people will need to take cholesterol lowering medications in addition to healthy lifestyle changes. Always work with your doctor to figure out what's best for you. I have seen some people with incredible diets, but unfortunately sometimes it just isn't enough. And many people say to me that they're worried about the side effects of going on medications. But sometimes you really need to weigh the pros versus the cons, because as I mentioned, cholesterol has that compounding effect. However, the next mistake is that sometimes when people do go on medication, they leave all of their healthy lifestyle changes go out the window. A study in the Journal of the American Heart Association found that people with high cholesterol tended to gain more weight and exercise less once they had started statins. And although these statins and other medications are highly effective, they are not meant to be the only way that you manage high cholesterol. Exercise and healthy eating is important for so many reasons beyond simply just your heart health. 
So continuing to upkeep your new habits will help prevent other diseases and promote overall good physical and mental health. Another mistake is not thinking about high triglyceride levels. These are other types of blood lipids that can be dangerous if they get too high. And usually when you do get a blood lipid panel, they will also check your triglycerides, but not always. So I would make sure that you request having these checked. And lifestyle habits can really impact triglyceride levels. Not getting enough exercise, eating foods that are high in refined sugar, and drinking alcohol can all impact your triglyceride levels. Furthermore, blood triglycerides can also come from excess calories because unused calories are stored as triglycerides in fat cells. The next mistake is stressing about eggs and shrimp. When we stress about cholesterol in food, eggs and shrimp are often the big ones that we worry about. However, eggs are a very cost-effective and convenient protein source, which is important in a world of rising grocery costs. Because eggs contain cholesterol, it was once believed that we should limit eggs. But what we know now is that dietary cholesterol has less of an impact on blood cholesterol levels for most people than once believed. It's saturated and trans fats that we need to look out for. A smaller percentage of people are more sensitive to dietary cholesterol, meaning that when they do eat foods containing cholesterol, their LDL cholesterol levels can rise. So if that is you, I would recommend consulting with a dietitian. But in general, eggs are a really cheap, safe and nutritious choice. So when I have clients that have high cholesterol, I don't tell them to avoid eggs. The advice is usually one egg a day or seven eggs over the course of a week. But it's how you cook your eggs that's important too. You don't wanna be frying or scrambling them with a load of butter. And as per the American Heart Association, shrimp is a healthier choice than cuts of meat that are high in saturated fat. So as long as you don't fry it, they can also be a very good lean protein source. The next mistake is not making your own food. Now you don't need to eat at home all of the time, but it should be the norm. When you dine out, you're not fully in control of your diet. So even if you're trying to make healthy choices, you don't know how your food is being cooked or what ingredients are being used. Plus, portion control can be a lot more challenging. The easiest way to ensure that you stick to a heart healthy diet is to prepare food yourself and make restaurant meals an occasional treat. And if you struggle with time or you don't have cooking skills, there are ways around this. You can do your grocery shopping online and have it delivered to save time. You can cook in bulk and freeze and start with very simple recipes. Healthy eating and cooking does not need to be difficult. There are also so many meal delivery options nowadays too. There's even ones that will send you all of the ingredients and the instructions. And you then make the meal yourself at home, which can often be a fun and healthy way of doing things. And you'll learn some new cooking skills and recipes along the way. The next mistake is having hidden saturated fat in your diet. This will likely be the case if you do eat out a lot. But even if you do make efforts to cook at home, many people use things like coconut oil, which is actually not a very heart friendly cooking oil because it's mainly saturated fat. Also, many of these processed foods that are marketed as healthy, like protein bars or vegan pre-prepared foods, some of them can be surprisingly high in saturated fat. So it's good to be checking your food labels. If you would like me to do a full video on how to read a food label, let me know in the comments below. The next mistake is not trying to give up smoking and vaping sooner. You really need to be trying to quit and prioritizing your attempts at quitting because it's not easy. But cigarette smoke contains over 7,000 chemicals and 69 cancer-causing chemicals. And let me be super clear about this. Cigarettes are the only legal consumer product that when they are used as they are intended, they will kill half of all long-term users. And by quitting, you can add as much as 10 years back to your life compared to if you continued to smoke. Now, while cigarette smoking has a much higher chance of causing a heart attack, Compared with vaping, you're still not off the hook if you vape. E-cigarettes contain nicotine and other toxic compounds that accelerate your heart rate and elevate your blood pressure. And a recent study found that vaping made you 34% more likely to have a heart attack compared with non-vapers. So if you smoke or vape, try to quit. And if you don't, don't start. So there we have it. That wraps up all of the cholesterol lowering mistakes. Hopefully now you can avoid these or make any corrections and get to your heart health goals sooner. If you enjoyed this video, I'd recommend checking out my video about the best and worst cholesterol lowering supplements and the best cholesterol lowering foods. For making it all the way to the end, I want to thank you by letting you know that I have a free recipe ebook, which I've linked in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you again next week.